Hey, what's up guys? Christian here for Chris Core Productions. This is what we're going to be creating today. So really excited to uh, be back here in After Effects with you guys and we're just picking off where we left off in the previous tutorial where we created this really trippy weird vertigo effect with this shot. Now as I mentioned before we were going to actually add some effects and give this shot a uh, VHS feel. Now you saw an intro slash outro in the beginning that had that 80s retro vibe to it and we will be doing that of course but not in this tutorial. So this tutorial will be creating that VHS look. So I just duplicated the layer, um, that composition that contains my footage, added a curves effect, and I'm just adding a little bit of contrast just by creating this S shape with the uh, RGB curve. Then we're gonna go on our red curve and we're just gonna squeeze this down. And again, we're really destroying this footage. We wanna distort it. Yeah, so if it looks weird, that's fine. Then we wanna set that to a transfer mode. I tried add, didn't really work out uh, too well with what I was doing, but we're just gonna leave it at that for now. I'm going to duplicate that layer, go back to my uh, curves adjustment of that new uh, layer, and we want to bring the red curve back to normal. We're going to go over to the green curve, bring that all the way down, and uh, then we can go to the blue curve and bring that all the way down as well. So essentially what we're doing is we're just crushing uh, blue and green so that we can just have red in the shot, and then the other one we did sort of the same thing where we had this sort of cyan tint. Now we're gonna change the transfer mode and set it to subtract. And now you can see that we have this really weird uh, effect going on, which is pretty trippy in itself already. But we're not gonna stop here. Of course, we're trying to do a VHS look, not whatever this is. So we're gonna pre-compose these two layers. And I've actually should have selected the, the bottom layer, but so grab that bottom layer, hit Command C and paste it back into that pre-comp we just created and drag it below everything. And then we wanna change the transfer mode of that pre-comp that we made, the color shift pre-comp, and set it to screen. So now what this gives us, sort of this weird chromatic aberration, and it also affects the colors in the shot as well. It makes them a little bit more flat, and uh, it's already giving us a really cool vintage retro uh, look. But we're not gonna stop here. Of course, we can add some brightness and contrast to that color shift composition that we created and uh, you can push these values to whatever you want. You can make it more subtle, more noticeable, uh, just, uh, just a way to play around with it. So now we're gonna duplicate our video layer one more time and we're gonna set that to soft light and then we're gonna add a tint effect and uh, drag and drop it onto that duplicate. So what this does, it adds a little bit of contrast and makes our shadows a little bit more rich, maybe a little bit too rich. So we can actually always uh, go into the opacity and bring it down to like, let's say 60%. That will make it a little bit more subtle because we still want to give it that flat, um, you know, retro look to it. So we're going to create a new solid and we're going to create some quick TV distortion. So what we're going to do is add one of the presets that comes with After Effects, which is the bad TV. Uh, any of them really work. Uh, the weak one seems uh, to fit best with this type of, uh, this type of look. And we're going to pre-compose all of the layers other than the TV distortion solid, but we're also going to pre-compose that as well. So layer, pre-compose and yeah, TV distortion comp, but you wanna make sure that you move all those attributes into that new composition. So if we double click on it, we enter that composition that we created, we can duplicate that layer, delete all of the stuffs, which will give us uh, just a plain black solid, add a fill effect and make it white. I just realized I could have just created a white solid, it would have been much quicker. Um, okay, so let's uh, create a new white solid and this will be our matte. This is, uh, you're gonna see what this does in just a second. So let's make that white and uh, we're just gonna create a mask that's a box shape, sort of like a bar. And then we're gonna select that mask, push it all the way up and we're gonna set a keyframe for the mask path. Make sure that keyframe is in the beginning of your composition here. Then move to a point in time that you like. Uh, this is really all arbitrary. Um, you know, this works, I guess. And with that mask selected, just drag it all the way down to the bottom of your composition. Set that mask to subtract, and now you can see that we just have uh, a white solid that's just revealing the, the, the TV distortion effect that we created. 
So going back to our original comp, what we're going to do is add a displacement map effect to our footage composition, so the one that contains our distorted footage. And we're going to tell it to look at the new composition that we created with TV distortion on it. So now if I zoom in, you can see that the magic is already happening. We're seeing a little bit of a distortion. It's pretty much just grabbing the uh, information from that comp with that white solid and those uh, pretty much those black lines that we created as a distortion. So you can make this more noticeable by actually turning on the, uh, the other comp that we had and set it to multiply. So we can also see the, the, the black bars that we created while seeing the distortion on the video. You can lower the opacity to make it as noticeable as you want it to be. And this gives us that typical just uh, bar that moves uh, down across the screen and some of those old tapes that have been, uh, you know, either rewinded too many times and just been um, not treated so well. Now, in the displacement map effect, we can uh, change the vertical displacement amount and the horizontal displacement amount so that we can uh, make this really subtle or really exaggerate it and really distort the crap out of this footage. Now, we're seeing a little bit of the edge of the composition here, so I'm just going to scale it up just a little bit. And another way of doing this could be using motion tile, but, you know, it's not worth it for this case. And then um, just for extra credit, we can add a glow effect and uh, you know play around with some of the settings. You definitely want to make it very subtle, but you want to make it so that uh, some of those highlights are have, a, have this sort of diffusion glow to them. So that's looking pretty good. I think we're getting really close to our VHS look. And of course, you can jump back into this composition where we created this distortion, make any changes like feathering out the mask for this uh, band going through the screen. And all of those changes will be obviously updated into our main comp. So now what I added here is the overlay effect that I'm actually gonna be posting really, really soon. And it just adds a four by three bars and it also has a lot of uh, cool distortion to it. And then to finish it all off, we can add an adjustment layer and we can add some noise just to make the image grittier more, with more grain and just, uh, just to add some grunge and distortion. So. That's looking pretty good. I've added some extra scenes here and we can see what the effect is looking like. Uh, another thing that we can do is add a little bit of a tint effect. Since uh, some of the more damaged tapes usually have a subtle tinge to them, so what we can do is uh, grab the map to black value and push it up to a grayish color or even like a, a dark purplish color. So we're lessening the contrast in our image, making it more flat, but we're also adding this, uh, this sort of uh, violet uh, weird tint effect which definitely adds to that retro vibe and of course you can uh, change the amount to tint to make it uh, as subtle as you want and that's pretty much it again the overlay asset that I will be releasing very soon really ties it all together and makes it even more convincing of course you can take it so much further than this and uh, again we are limited by just uh, using what comes with After Effects I didn't want to use any external plugin since I know how annoying that can be but definitely tune in next week where we're going to be creating this uh, really cheesy intro slash outro with this retro look. And uh, what's going to be interesting about this is that we're going to be looking at several techniques that I use most of the time when creating any intro. So I've gotten a lot of questions on how to make my intro. Well, this is a good opportunity to explore those motion graphics techniques that I've used in some of my other work. All right, guys, thank you so much for subscribing, for liking and just sharing this video in filmmaking and VFX communities or anybody that can really use any of this. Uh, your support has been amazing. And because of that, I will be releasing that stock footage overlay asset very, very soon on my website. I'll definitely post the video on here, letting you guys know when it's up. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.